Hello, I am Professor S. Shankaran in the Department of Metallurgical and Materials Engineering. Okay, uh, let us continue our discussion on uh, dislocations. In the last class, we looked at uh, again uh, different kinds of you know, <coughs> interactions between the dislocations and also kind of you know a mechanics of dislocations i would say in terms of uh, dislocation generation and its uh, interaction with uh, obstacles and so on right in that uh, connection we are going to continue our discussion on the dislocation intersections um, we, are, we looked at interactions and now this is intersections between two line dislocations right so the number of dislocations increases as the deformation proceeds and the increased number makes their movement become more difficult okay as i mentioned in the uh, previous class we are now getting into uh, details of a deformation so though we are yet to address that but in the context of dislocation and its multiplication we are indirectly uh, discussing the plastic deformation so so the, the number of dislocation increases as the deformation proceeds that means as as you continue to deform the material in a i mean below recrystallization or the cold deformation the increased num number makes each dislocation to move further okay so it become difficult because of the interaction between other uh, or neighboring dislocations this increased difficulty of movement is caused by the intersection of dislocations moving on different planes so we were talking about uh, dislocation cross lift dislocation you know game interaction with the one dislocation with the other okay so all these things will have some um, impact on the dislocation density for example i also mentioned uh, about the wavy slip and uh, planar slip and so on where when we talk about a wavy slip material uh, we are uh, we are connecting the mobility of dislocation in three dimension that means the dislocation motion is not restricted or confined to a, a given plane uh, for example that is what happens in the planar material in a slip material but in a wavy slip material the dislocation moves freely all over the place but three dimensional motion is not restricted so in such cases uh, when the density of the dislocation increases obviously they will encounter the other dislocations and the uh, so number of dislocation lines per unit area increases then the difficulty arises in the in terms of uh, motion so during easy glide the rate of work hardening is low because slip occurs on a parallel planes and there are few intersections okay we are now bringing a, another term uh, work hardening we will in, in fact we are going to, we have to address this uh, terminology this this term will uh, uh, surface when we discuss the you know cold work of uh, material and uh, one of the strengthening mechanisms this will come as a part of the uh, content but here as it is related closely related to the room temperature deformation or cold deformation so here the rate of work hardening so that means it is also related to the dislocation density and its interaction so that's why it is here so during ec glide the rate of work hardening is low that means in a when there is a uh, there is no high density of dislocation the glide is enabled without any problem in a glide plane then the work hardening rate will be slow i mean low sorry not slow low because the slip occurs in a parallel planes the slip we are we have all the possible planes which are uh, favorably oriented here in in this case all the parallel planes we are assuming that they are all favorably oriented so the dislocations will try to 
move in those parallel planes and then the intersection will be minimal that is what it is as soon as a slip occurs on more than one set of slip planes dislocations on different planes will intersect and these intersections impede further motion causing rapid or parting okay so uh, a slip occurring at few slip planes uh, possibly a parallel slip planes then the glide is easy not impeded by any other dislocation but when we are talking about multiple slip that means several slip planes are activated where all the slip planes will move in different different direction depending upon the easy glide orientation and so on we will see which orientation will enable uh, easy glide of this location and so on so once those uh, slip additional slip planes are activated the dislocation motion takes place in all the uh, randomly oriented planes then obviously one would expect that these dislocations will try to interact with each other and then it will impede the motion of the other so that is where the the restriction comes comes into play and that is an indication of what hardening so which is here we are talking about rapid work hardening that means as i said that the dislocation moves with the velocity very high velocity right that's what we have discussed in the previous the velocity is very high so that's why the interaction also will be very rapid and results in rapid work hardening the nature of dislocation intersections can be understood by considering several types of intersection in a simple cubic crystals as illustrated in figure so this is one set of schematic we are going to look at it a uh, very simple case we are going to assume and then try to understand what kind of i mean impact it will create right when two dislocations intersect a jog is created in each dislocation so we are now getting into a new term jog in a dislocation two in a line i mean two dislocations intersect a jog is created okay so jog is a typical name given when uh, i mean the jog results only by the uh, as the consequence of intersection of two dislocation lines so that way we can remember this so the direction of the jog is parallel to burger's vector of the intersecting dislocation and the length of the jog equals to the magnitude of the burger's vector of the intersecting dislocation so this is uh, some characteristic of a jog okay so uh, this is the figure we we were referring in the previous slide so we will concentrate uh, uh, one by one there are too many figures at one time so it is uh, it's better to spend some time to understand the figure first and then we'll get into the concept the the unit cell which is drawn here this is before intersection there are two uh, dislocation lines are drawn a and b if you look at the a the edge, edge you can clearly see that edge dislocation sign right this is edge dislocation and side the b also you can see that the edge dislocation is there in the positive edge dislocation okay and a the top as well as bottom it is positive edge dislocations now these two arrow indicates the direction of the motion okay that is trying to respond to the uh, stress external stress or whatever it is it is it is a direction of this two dislocation line they move in these directions on a is b is moving coming out of this uh, unit i mean unit cell and it is going inside the unit cell so this is before intersection and this is after the intersection what you are seeing here is the dislocation has uh, surpassed that means the interaction 
intersection takes place and then it, it produces a jog here the b dislocation here and a dislocation here and then they just uh, surpass each other and then create a jog and then it start moving further but if you look at the the next figure here something is recording yeah so if you look at this uh, the second figure where already a, a screw dislocation is generated and then you see the dislocation line c and d and then look at their direction and if these two dislocations are trying to move in the presence of a screw dislocation like this then after they intersect what happens you see that it produces a jog here and there again there is no uh, problem the jog will uh, move in this direction or this jog will move in this direction depending upon the force but how what resulted of the intersection is shown here so still that line is moving in that direction this line is moving in this direction but third case is quite uh, different you see that uh, the screw dislocation um, is created here and there is a, another screw dislocation perpendicular to this unit cell. Now, the dislocation line E and F are in a very different situation as compared to A, B, C, D, these two cases. So, this is a before intersection, after intersection. So, you see that the, as the intersection pro proceeds, then you see that the jog which is created here on E and F are shown here. They are not similar jogs or their motion is not similar to the previous uh, jog motion because we will see why. So, for Dislocation A and B in figure, the jogs create no problem. If the upper part of the dislocation A and the right side of the dislocation B move slightly faster, the jogs will disappear. Okay. The same is true for dislocation C. If its left side moves faster, it will disappear. Okay. The jog in dislocation D simply represents a ledge in the extra half plane and it can move with the rest of the dislocation. Okay. Here we are talking about the D. Okay. However, the jogs in dislocations E and F cannot move conservatively. We are talking about E and F. These two jogs will not uh, move conservatively because you see that enlarged view of this uh, E and F is given. Their uh, the sh shear stress which is acting on these two lines are also shown here, and uh, the enlarged view of this ledge is shown here. So this is going to move this this direction or this direction. And this is this ledge is going to move this direction or this direction depending upon the uh, direction of force okay these jogs have an edge character and the direction of the motion is not in their slip plane this is a uh, problem okay if the direction of the motion is not in their slip plane and uh, they are going to encounter uh, each other because you see that uh, this plane that shear uh, I mean, screw dislocation on this direction is going to come this direction, uh, move in this upward and this direction. That means two 
screw dislocations move in a perpendicular direction then this jog will get i mean we will get into a very special situation okay what is that situation so this is uh, the continuation of those jogs so this is a jog this figure shows that a continued motion of this jog dislocation would force atom into the interstitial positions suppose if the jog goes like this and then another jog comes in the opposite direction they will force interstitial atoms uh, to get into this void okay and there is another possibility it can also uh, uh, produce something different uh, like uh, what is shown in figure b that jogs of opposite sign they produce vacancies okay so here it is shown vacancy here so here it is an interstitial and here it is a vacancy so there are two possibilities okay either they can get locked on in interstitial solute atoms or they just can create a vacancy so this is what shown in both uh, e type uh, jogs and an f type jog which is shown in the previous slide so this is again an interstitial uh, and this is a vacancy just to continue that if the intersection had been in the opposite direction movement of jogs would have create two i mean create a row of vacancies suppose uh, in the line of dislocation uh, we we said that the opposite jogs will create a vacancies all of them would result in a, a, a line of vacancies if it this kind of uh, ledge formation continue to move in the opposite uh, direction okay so to give a idea of what happens in a, a boundary like this and this is a a ledge i mean it go a dislocation boundary it forms a, a ledge which is uh, similar to what is produced here chalk and um, these positions will get either as i said it either it get locked by interstitial or it will get create a vacancy so that means it will get locked, pinned down by this points all these points right so th there will be a drag and then we know the line tension all this uh, this how the dislocation moves and so on and then finally um, it will produce a vacancies like this and then it, as it moves okay so that's what is uh, written here if the intersection had been in opposite direction movement of jogs would create a row of vacancies this is a row of vacancies but it is not going to happen so easily because energy consideration if you discuss that a yeah, high energy is required to produce a row of interstitials therefore an interstitial producing jog will likely to be pinned rather than produce a row of interstitials okay so uh, this causes a drag on any motion of the dislocation like what we have seen in this uh, previous image so we are now talking about uh, two types of jog interstitial producing jog or vacancy producing jog intersections cause causing interstitial producing jogs are geometrically much more likely than the intersection causing vacancy producing jogs the reason for this could be understood in terms of the slip systems likely to be simultaneously activated okay so to explain this whether the interstitial producing jog will get produced or the vacancy producing jogs will get produced we have one schematic here what is the schematic shows the schematic showing why interstitial producing jogs are more likely than the vacancy producing jogs you will see figure below illustrates this 
for a crystal with two slip systems oriented at 45 degrees. So this is a one slip system, this is another slip system. To the axis of tension or it could be compression, in this case it is uh, tension. The intersection of these slip systems will create only interstitial producing jaws. In real crystals, it is possible to find the stress states that can activate slip system that will create vacancy producing jocks, but they were fewer than those that create interstitials. So what it means is uh, when you have the real systems, the interstitial producing jocks will be the most prominent case as compared to the vacancy producing jocks because of the again an uh, energy consideration and what practically will happen is because most of the real systems will have some or the other impurities interstitial atoms and so on so that is another reason why it is preferring to produce ice with the multiple intersections the number of pinning points increases and the stress to continue moving the dislocation increases. So the intersection we talk about uh, as the uh, dislocation density is increasing and then when you have uh, the disloc I mean the intersection causing pinning this uh, second phase particle or a solute atom or interstitials here we are talking about that increases they are all anchoring points that means whatever the jobs produce they are already locked up. So the that means uh, it will act as an obstacle for the other neighboring uh, jogs or any other dislocation to move around. Okay. These intersection act as anchors greatly decreasing the mobility of the dislocation. As the number of dislocation increases, the frequency of uh, intersections also increases, making further slip more difficult. So, this kind of mechanisms uh, give you a perspective of why uh, the dislocation density uh, is directly promoting work hardening. So, whatever the uh, mechanics we are just discussing, it is uh, completely related to the work hardening nature of uh, any uh, given material. So finally, the uh, we, we talk about claim. We have already discussed this in terms of uh, dislocation motion, and here uh, the schematic shows the the extra half plane. In one case, it is uh, extending uh, downward; the other case, it is moving upward. So there are two possibilities: either it can come down or it can go up, and we have seen that. The movement of an edge dislocation out of its glide plane can occur only if there is a net diffusional flux of atoms away from or to the dislocation. Such motion is called climb. If you recall the previous uh, climb slides, we have shown some you know, vacancies which is trying to get attracted towards this uh, dislocation core and in that case the atom will go and occupy that vacancy that means the extra off plane is going up that is climb that is a positive climb or the vacancy is started moving from away from this score and the atoms are coming here that means the dislocation climb is downward okay so the removal of atoms from the dislocation causes upward climb and the addition of atoms to the dislocation causes a downward climb both are equally possible depending upon the uh, characteristic of a material. Very important point is because climb requires di diffusion it is important only at elevated temperature during creep. Okay. So we, this particular mechanism of dislocation climb is quite relevant to the creep. We are, when we discuss the creep mechanisms we will use this uh, terminology of uh, I mean, or the aspect of dislocation. Diffusion controlled climb allows dislocation to avoid obstacles that impede their glide and may become a controlling mechanism during trip. So this is again a, a very important point. A diffusion controlled uh, climb is also a mechanism of a creep 
at high temperature deformation. We will uh, use this uh, or we will we'll bring all these aspects when we discuss it. So, this is kind of a mechanics aspect of uh, dislocation. That is why I brought it now itself, though it involves a lot of plastic deformation. Those things we can connect it later. But if you look at purely the mechanics part, it, it in all these activities, uh, whatever we have uh, of dislocation we have seen, it uh, very suitably. Um, I mean, uh, suitably illustrated the uh, dislocation nature.